Let's talk about elastic collisions in physics. Here is a simple problem with not such a simple solution. We have this mass, which is initially moving at a speed V1, that is traveling towards a stationary particle, which does not have any speed. Now, after the collision, so this here is after the collision, both of the particles are moving in the same direction. So this one here is V1 prime, which is the final speed of the initial particle. And this one here is V2 prime, which is the final speed of the second mass. Can we find expressions for the final speed of both of these particles? Because this is an elastic collision, we can write down the two laws that we're going to be working with. Number one, conservation of momentum. So because momentum is conserved, we can say that m1 v1, that's our momentum before the collision, will be equal to a total momentum after the collision, which is going to be m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 primed. Given that this is an elastic collision, kinetic energy is also conserved. So we can say that the initial kinetic energy, which is a half m1 v1 squared, will be equal to a half. Then we're going to have m1 v1 prime squared plus a half m2 v2 primed, all of that squared. Let's consider the second equation first of all and uh, let's do a little, bit, a little bit of simplification. So what I'm going to first do is just uh, get rid of these halves and the second thing which I'm going to do is I'm just going to rearrange for m2 v2 prime squared and what we're going to get is that m2 v2 primed squared will be equal to uh, m1 v1 squared take away m1 v1 primed squared. Our next step will just be to take out a factor of m1. So what we're going to get is m1 v1 squared and then take away v1 primed squared like this. Now ideally I want to get rid of these squares over here so I'm just going to use the simple algebra identity and I'm going to say that m2 v2 primed squared is equal to m1 and then I'm going to have v1 minus v1 primed and then multiply by v1 plus v1 primed like that because if we were to multiply it out we would get this. Just waiting for the sirens to pass by. A few moments later. Now let's consider the conservation of momentum equation. So I'm going to take this first equation over here and I'm just going to rearrange it for m2 v2 primed and what we're going to get, I'll just do that over here, I'm going to get m2 v2 primed will be equal to m1 v1 and then take away m v1 primed uh, of course, we can just uh, say that this is equal to m v m1 v1 take away v1 primed like that, and uh, this is equal to m2 v2 primed. Now, what we can do is take m1 from this equation and then substitute that back into this expression over here. So let's just rearrange that over here just to make it absolutely clear. I'm going to have m1 is equal to m2 v2 primed squared divided by v1 minus v1 primed v1 plus v1 primed like so. Now let's take this expression and then sub that back into this equation. What we're going to get is that m2 v2 is equal to, now rather than m1, I'm just going to write m2 v1 
prime, sorry, v2 primed squared divided by v1 minus v1 primed. Then we're going to have v1 plus v1 primed like so. And now we can do some cancellations. So we can cancel out the M2s. We can cancel out this V2, which will get rid of the square. Or we've got a factor here, V1 minus uh, V1 primed like so. And we could cancel out those as well. And what we're left with is that V2 primed is just equal to v1 plus v1 final which uh, is actually which is actually a really interesting relatively simple result after all of these now that we have this result let's use that back into our original equation for conservation of momentum so i'm going to take this equation and uh, i'm just going to rearrange that for m2 v2 so just kind of taking from here to here we're going to have m2 v2 primed is equal to m1 v1 take away m1 v1 prime so we're going to have m1 v1 minus v1 prime like this okay well let's do a, now let's do the substitution because we know that uh, v2 prime is equal to just v1 plus v1 prime and we're going to have m2 and then v1 plus v1 primed is equal to m1. I'm going to have v1 take away v1 primed like that. Um, let's uh, get rid of these brackets. So we're going to have m2 v1 plus m2 uh, v1 primed. This is going to equal then m1 v1 take away m1 v1 primed okay so all the factors in terms of v1 let's put on the left i'm going to have m2 v1 and then we're going to take away m1 v1 and now let's keep on the right hand side all of the factors in terms of v1 primed which are going to be take away m1 v1 prime take away m2 v1 prime okay uh, let's get rid of these negative signs so i'm just going to multiply everything by minus one so that's going to give me m1 v1 take away m2 v1 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v1 primed and there's a prime there i'm almost running out of whiteboard space we're going to have the v1 and then what we have left in the brackets is m1 take away m2 is equal to v1 primed and then m1 plus m2 in other words uh should we just rearrange that for v1 prime so the final initial velocity v1 will be just equal to m1 take away m2 over m1 plus m2 multiplied by v1 and this is the derivation of this equation which tells us the final initial speed so even though it seems like a relatively simple problem it has quite a lot of very interesting algebra behind it now let's see whether we can find the second speed v2 primed let's see if i have space left on the whiteboard to find our second equation so i'm going to take our important result right over here i'm going to substitute this back 
into this equation over here. And um, what we're going to get is that V2 primed is equal to V1 plus, now rather than V1 primed, what I'm going to say is that this is equal to just this expression over here, which is M1 take away M2 over M1 plus M2 multiplied by V1. Okay, so let's put everything under a common denominator. So what we're going to get is that this thing is equal to V1. Let's uh, multiply both the top and the bottom of the fraction by M1 plus M2. So this will be equal to M1 plus M2 V1 uh, divided by M1 plus M2, this will be a common denominator, plus M1 take away M2 multiplied by V1. Now the plus M2 V1 factor and the minus M2 V1 factor are just going to essentially cancel out and what we're left with is going to be double this factor of M1 times V1 here. And then we've got another one, M1, V1 here. So overall, we're going to have two times M1 over, or times V1 over M1 plus M2. And this is our expression for V2 primed. Well, like, circle it like this and this was our first equation like that and we've managed to fit all of this into our whiteboard if you've watched this until the end you really really like another very hard problem from the international physics olympiad and that is just over here